Hello, fabulous third gators. How are you today? I have a story today called I Love Guinea Pigs, and it's story time with the guinea pigs. I know you don't see any, do you? Because they're hiding in here. Peekaboo, there's one. There's Lucy. She's under here. Where'd she go? Lucy, come on. And then Ethel. Ethel is inside. There, there's a bum. Let me see if I can get her face. Can you see? I don't know if you can see. There's there. Anyway, I'm making you dizzy with all that. So they'll come out, maybe. They hear me read. Oh, there she is. There's Lucy. Bye, Lucy. All right. Ethel may or may not come out. She's kind of skittish. Anyway, let's read a story called I Love Guinea Pigs. This is written by Dick King Smith, illustrated by Anita Jerram. And this is a nonfiction story. So this is not really a story as much as some information about guinea pigs. Look at all the different kinds of guinea pigs. I love guinea pigs, and I have a feeling that that is the author. I feel a feeling that that is a picture of Dick King Smith, or an illustration of him. There's a silly old saying that if you hold a guinea pig up by its tail, its eyes will drop out. Well, of course they wouldn't, even if you could, which you couldn't, because guinea pigs don't have tails. Sorry, I can't see my page. They aren't pigs either. They're rodents, like mice and rats and squirrels. So up here it says, what do guinea pigs have in common with pigs? Well, the males and females are known as boars and sows, just like a real pig. Rodents have special front teeth that are great for gnawing things. These teeth go on growing throughout the animal's life and are self-sharpening. So their teeth never stop growing, kind of like our fingernails. And they have to, um, they got to wind, grind them down. They got to, they have to chew on, chew on things. And if you see right here in their cage, there's Lucy. But you can see at the end of, at the end of their ladder, it's all, it's got a big kind of a piece missing. That's because they've chewed it. I know, it's crazy. I put the wood in there to chew on, and they do chew on some wood, but they chew on things to keep their teeth, kind of grind their teeth down. Bye, Lucy. Hi, baby. And there's Ethel. <laughs> I think they like story time. <laughs> As for the other parts of their name, guinea pigs were first brought to Europe about 400 years ago by Spanish sailors probably from a country in South America called Dutch Guiana. And the sailors called them Guiana pigs. In fact, the guinea pig is a member of the cavy family, and its Latin name is Cavia porcellus, which means a piggy-looking cavy. Anyway... Whatever they're called, it's the way they look that I've always liked. They're so chunky and chubby and cuddly with their blunt heads and sturdy bodies and short legs. They come in tons of different colors and they can be smooth coated or rough coated or long coated, not to mention the other varieties. I've had hundreds of guinea pigs over the last 50 years but I've always liked the Abyssinians best. And this is an Abyssinian. It's kind of, hair kind of sticks all over the place. This is called a Sheltie. This is a crested, because the top of its head kind of has a crest. There's a smooth guinea pig, and then a Peruvian guinea pig, which you can hardly tell which is front and back. It's got such long hair. And there's still many, many, many more kinds than that. Guinea pigs are such sensible animals. They're awfully easy to keep because they aren't fussy. They don't like the cold, of course, or the damp any more than you would. 
and they're not happy living in a pokey little place any more than you would be. But as long as they have a comfortable, warm, dry place to live, guinea pigs are as happy as can be. Guinea pigs like a really big room, roomy hutch, or better still, a wire pen out on the grass. They're hardy animals and don't often get sick. Properly cared for, they can live a long time. Most guinea pigs live for about five to eight years. I once had a crested sow named Zen. Remember, sow is a female. She lived two years with me and then eight more, eight more with one of my daughters. People's hair grows whiter as they age, but Zen's grew darker. There's, there's Lucy. I think she was chewing on the wood. Oh, now she's camera shy. Guinea pigs need plenty of food. They love eating, just like you do, and feeding them is half the fun of having them. Some people, of course, feed them nothing but hay and pellets from the pet store, and they're just fine. But how boring a diet like that must be, both for the piggy-looking cavy and its owner. I always used to give my guinea pigs lots of other kinds of food as well. Cabbage and cauliflower leaves, carrots, pieces of bread and apple peelings and wild plants like dandelions and clover. I give them water too, of course. Guinea pigs need clean drinking water every day and their water bottle often needs washing because they like blowing pieces of food back up the spout. <laughs> you guys do that with your, with your straws too, I'm sure. One especially nice thing about guinea pigs is that if you handle them regularly and carry them around, stroke them, talk to them, and make a fuss over them, they become really fond of you. The correct way to pick up a guinea pig is with one hand over its shoulders and the other supporting its bottom. And this is the best way to keep them close to you. Except when I hold Ethel that way, she bites me right on the right on there by the, my shirt. That's Ethel in the corner. Another nice thing about guinea pigs is that they talk a lot. When they want food or water, they often get a give a sort of whistle, sometimes low, sometimes loud. Boars say chutter when they're squaring up for a fight. Oh, ch -ch 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 -ch. I don't know how to make guinea pig sound. So do sows when their babies pester them too much. Actually, you can hear them. Oh, hear it? See? That, they're two girls. They kind of squeal and they, can you hear? Yep, they give a little. They're not unhappy. I think they're happy right now, but they, they do get too close to each other and then they get a little irritated, but. That's what they sound like. <laughs> Other things guinea pigs say are put, chut, tweet, and drrr, they kind of purr. But when one guinea pig says purr to another guinea pig, it's as plain as the nose on your face, and that only means one thing. I love you. And that brings me to what's best of all about having guinea pigs baby ones. Because their ancestors, the wild cavies of South America, lived out in the open with enemies all around them, their young ones had to be ready to run for it. So the guinea pig sow carries her unborn litter for a very long time, about 70 days, and they arrive in the world fully furred, with their eyes open, and their mouths already filled with teeth. Newborn guinea pigs are such a comical sight. Their heads and feet look too big for their bodies. Baby rabbits are born blind and naked and helpless, but not baby guinea pigs. But almost immediately, 
they show an interest in those two favorite guinea pig pursuits, eating and conversation. Of all the guinea pigs I've had, there were two that I will never forget. Both were Abyssinians. Both were boars, that means boys, and each in his time fa- and each in his time fathered dozens of lovely, big-headed, big-footed babies. One was a bright golden color, and his name was King Arthur. That was King Arthur right there. The other was a blue roan named Beach Boy. Both are bur- buried in my yard. There's a solitary apple tree at the edge of my lawn, and I like to look at it and think that under it, Beach Boy and King Arthur lie peacefully, one on one side of the tree, one on the other. I'm not sad about this, just happy to remember what a lot of pleasure I've had from all of my guinea pigs. One especially nice thing about guinea pigs is that if you make a fuss over them, they become really fond of you. The end. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about guinea pigs and that you got to see Lucy and then Ethel. I don't know where she went. She hides. They have all their hidey holes. They love to hide. They like to hide in their igloo. They like to hide under the, sometimes they go under that little tunnel. They come up to the top where that's where their food is and their water. So they like to come up here. <laughs> there goes Lucy running around. Um, they like to go sit, they sit in the corners a lot. I'll come down and I'll show you. This is the other part of their cage. I made this little we call it like a car, it looks like the car wash, but they like to run underneath there and hide. And then they have another tunnel over there. They love to hide in their tunnel. I think they're both in that tunnel. Yep, there's, there's Lucy. Come on out, Lucy, say hi. Hi, come say hi. I know, you're two, both of you are in there. I know, peekaboo. There she is again on this side. <laughs> All right. Well, boys and girls, when you come to school, hopefully I will be able to bring Lucy and Ethel. Oh, there's Ethel. There she is. I know. I know. I got gotcha. you. They like to, they love it when I talk to them. <laughs> they get excited. <laughs> so maybe you guys, when you guys come to school, you can talk to them and they'll be very happy. They do miss the kids. All right. Hope you enjoyed story time with Lucy and Ethel. Bye, guys.